So let's keep it going. Black Hebrew Israelites are Christian. Now, let's sum up everything. Let's make sure that everything that's being said is the truth. Now, we talked about the kingdom. In Matthew 21, 43, it speaks of the kingdom going to another nation. Now, keep in mind, Jesus didn't say the kingdom would be going to the lost sheep. He didn't say the kingdom would be going to the new Israelites in the future. Now, Jesus used the word lost sheep. He used the word Israelite. Now, Jesus knew how to use those words. He used them in the Gospels. He didn't say the Israelites would have the kingdom. The problem with us, we can't understand and we can't just grasp that something was going to be taken from Israel. When the black man reads Matthew 21, 43, it reads, and the kingdom shall be taken from you and given to another nation, the black man automatically just believes that that says the kingdom shall be given to Israel. <laughs> God said the kingdom will be taken from Israel, but in their little minds, it reads to them, the kingdom shall be given to Israel. They can't understand God's law of giving and taking away. God gives and God takes away. Now, Ezra, he preached boldly that the kingdom would go to a new people. This is in 2 Ezra chapter 2. This is in 2 Ezra chapter 1. He spoke of the kingdom leaving Israel. And from him comes the famous quote, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou which slew the prophets, how often did I want to gather you like a hen gathers her chickens, but she was not willing. Now, when Jesus said that in Matthew, he got that from Ezra. Ezra and the prophet Jesus was both on one accord. They both spoke of the kingdom leaving Israel. Now, even John the Baptist said the same thing. He said, don't think that just because you are a child of Abraham, okay, that you're going to get the kingdom. In other words, he said, God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And this is in total agreement with the Bible when it says he have hope in his servant Israel and remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. So God had to help Israel by going back to Israel. Ishmael, okay? Abraham is not just the father of Israel. Wake up, you racist, prejudiced Christians. Abraham is the father of many nations. Why? Because from him came the Gentile messenger, okay? All the other prophets were only sent to their own nation, okay? Jesus was a prophet to Israel, okay? But the prophet Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon him, he was sent as a mercy to all of humanity. He was sent to gather all the families of the earth. Also, he didn't say the kingdom would be going to the northern kingdom as IUIC teaches. He didn't say that. He said the kingdom would be going to another kingdom. Ethnos, that is another race. So with that, we can conclude that the kingdom was taken from Israel. Now, God takes the kingdom from whoever he wishes and gives the kingdom to whoever he wishes. That's just how God does things. God is all about surplanting, just like he did with the Canaanites. He replaced them with the Israelites. But what happened? The Israelites broke the covenant. So what happened? They were uprooted 
from their land in 70 CE and another nation came in their place. So it's safe to say that the kingdom was taken from Israel. Now we know that Israelite camps want to teach that that was only talking about the chief priests and the leaders, the Pharisees. But no, he was speaking to the big people and the small people. For instance, for instance, for instance. every time the children of Israel went into captivity, such as when Jeremiah announced to the children of Israel, he gave them an opportunity to repent. And they didn't want to listen. What happened? Everybody went into captivity. And the kingdom was taken from the children of Israel even back then. Even the poor that remained in Israel, they didn't have the kingdom. God took it from the leaders. So therefore, God took it from the people as a whole. Okay, so we understand that the kingdom has been taken from Israel. Now, who has the kingdom today? Who is the most powerful army today? Okay, United States. What religion predominantly is the United States? United States is Christian. Okay, now we have some sprinkles in there. But about 69% of the U.S. Army is Christian, Catholic, Baptist. Everything in between in the Christian faith is in the military. So therefore, it is safe to say that the kingdom is in the hand of the Christians today. That's why I teach metaphors. I told you. The house of Saul is the house of Christianity because the house of Saul is, in fact, the house of Paul. And so the founder of Christianity is none other than who? You know his name. His name was Paul, whose name used to be Saul. And he is still Saul. He still the wolf in sheep clothing that Jesus warned us about that would come after him with the signs, with the miracles. Jesus warned of one coming out of the wilderness, out of the desert. Okay? He said, do not believe it. That's Paul. Now, Paul was a Pharisee. He was the son of a Pharisee. Jesus was the only prophet to warn us about the leaven of the Pharisees. What is leaven? Leaven is yeast. And the children of Israel were told not to eat leavened bread during the killing of the firstborn. Because what is that going into? That is going into the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The same exact thing that King Saul was doing. When the prophet Samuel died, he went to a witch to bring him up, to conjure him back up. Now, everything you see in the Old Testament, Saul, is what you see in the New Testament, Saul. You're not going to hear anybody preaching and teaching this, okay? I'm not Googling this. I'm not following nobody else's videos. This is right here coming out in the house of David. This is the types in the shadows. Everything you see in the Old Testament Saul, you see in the New Testament King Saul. Old Testament King Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. Same thing with Saul. The symbol is the wolf. Same thing with Saul. King Saul was the first king of Israel. Same thing with Saul in the New Testament. Christianity is the strongest religion, okay? Paul is still the king of the Christian church. Jesus is not the founder of it. Paul is going back to King Saul. King Saul was killing the priest of his day. He killed 85 priests of no. He was chasing David around trying to kill him. 
And it's the same exact thing with the New Testament Saul. He started off killing Christians and then he became the father of Christianity, okay? And the Christians right now are chasing the seed of David around and that is metaphorically speaking of Islam. Christianity is at war with Islam. Christianity hates Islam. Christianity is like King Saul chasing baby David around trying to kill him. Okay? King Saul brought up witches. Paul brought us Christianity, which is idolatry, which is witchcraft. Okay? He was a head taller than all of the men. Speaking of the Old Testament King Saul. Now, the Apostle Paul his religion, Christianity, is a head taller than all other religions. It is the largest religion right now. King Saul's sin was sacrifice. He was sacrificing on the battlefield. He was supposed to wait a full seven days, a number of completion, until Samuel came and offered the sacrifice. It's the same thing with the New Testament King Saul. He crucified Jesus. He sacrificed Jesus too soon. Jesus did not die yet. Jesus will not die until later. God is going to cause him to die a natural death. So the sin of the first King Saul was sacrifice. The sin of the New Testament King Saul was sacrifice. Now get this. The Old Testament King Saul was supposed to kill off the Amalekites, okay? But what was he doing? He was offering sacrifices, saying that sacrifices is better than obedience. And Samuel had to correct him and say, you know what? Obedience is better than sacrifice. This is the exact same thing in Christianity. King Saul is still alive, okay? His teachings are still alive. And it's through the apostate Paul. His sin was sacrifice. He teaches us that what Jesus did on the cross, supposedly, is greater than all of our obedience. He is following his ancestor, King Saul. Everything you see in that man, in the Old Testament, you see in the same man in the New Testament. OK, so the church has failed. The Israelite camps have failed. All right. They don't see the truth. That's right before your eyes. God made it so simple. So simple. The house of Saul is the house of Paul. This is proof that Paul is the founder of Christianity. Now, the Old Testament Saul, he presumed to take on the office of a priest. And the New Testament Saul presumed to take on the office of a prophet, of an apostle. That's why he's the only one who calls himself an apostle. Okay? There's nothing new under the sun. The thing that have been is the thing that shall be. The Old Testament King Saul was supposed to kill off the seed of Edom or the seed of Esau or Esau, prophet Esau. The first Saul was supposed to kill the seed of Esau, everything. The New Testament Saul was supposed to kill off Christianity. He started off on the right track. But what happened? He converted. He converted, just like King Saul, he started off killing witches. The Bible says, do not suffer a witch to live, okay? He started off on the right track, killing the church, killing the church. But then he became the father of the church, okay? He converted just like Saul. Saul was killing the witches, and then... He became the head witch because he even promised by God that he would keep that woman alive 
even though his law says you are not supposed to to suffer a witch to live in the book of Exodus. Oh, it's the truth. So what I'm presenting is truth. Everything I'm bringing out is truth. It's factual. The Israelite camps don't have the kingdom today. The disciples did not have the kingdom. They was put out of Israel in 70 CE. If they were supposed to have the kingdom... Why was they asking Jesus about it in the book of Acts? Will you restore the kingdom to us? They did not have it. Okay? The Israelites blew it. And Moses saw this. That's why he said, God is going to put a foolish nation over you. What's a foolish nation? A foolish nation is a nation of people who believe in the cross, okay? Believing in the cross is foolishness, okay? But there's coming a day, and we know by 2050, 2075, most definitely, Islam will be the largest religion. It's already the fastest growing religion. It's just like the hare versus the turtle. The hare or the rabbit, or get it, the rabbi, Paul. He was ahead. Christianity was ahead for a long time. Well, what happened? The turtle crept up. The green book, the Quran, crept up and took the lead, okay? So the IUIC precepts, their breakdowns, their package sucks. You can't get complete prophecy in the Bible. The Bible's all over the place. One minute is talking about restoring Israel. One minute is talking about not having any mercy on Israel. Those are dark sentences. God only spoke plainly to Moses. So going by their northern kingdom breakdowns and Hosea chapter 1 and, and the Gentiles and all that, you will be lost. They don't even know what happened to the tribe of Dan. Okay? Because the prophecy was passed to the nation of Ishmael. The scepter of the prophethood went to Shiloh, and the book was sealed to the Bene Israel. You get the most truest prophecies in the Quran. For instance, people say there's no prophecy in the Quran. Well, the Quran says that Islam would prevail above all religions. And right now, we are on our way to being number one, okay? The Quran says that the book will be preserved. The Quran is preserved. We don't have any unknown authors like the Bible. The Quran says neither did they kill him nor crucify him for Allah took him. Now, that right there is the most simple truth that's right before your eyes. In the Bible, Joseph was a type and shadow of Jesus. They have about 60 parallels. Now, Joseph, he was not killed. It was a big lie. It was a lie that was hid for a long time. And then the truth came out later, and it's the same exact thing with the prophet Isa. He was not killed. It only was made to appear to them that way. But he was not killed nor crucified for Allah took him. The prophet Muhammad said that in the last day, people would be dressing, only dressing to show their bodies. That's true. The Quran predicted that the white man's kingdom, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm speaking of the Roman Empire, would be defeated. By a man of Islam. Okay. Constantinople was defeated by Mehmet II, which is Mohammed in Turkish. And he defeated the Roman Empire. Okay. This was all prophecy. The prophet Mohammed had predicted this years before it happened. Okay. And Mehmet II conquered Constantinople, which is history people do not want to talk about. The prophet Muhammad says, surely 
you will conquer Constantinople and what a great army that would be. And trust me, all those attempts and failed and he was the successful one to conquer Constantinople. So when we talk about prophecy, people don't know what prophecy is. They don't understand the truth is prophecy. You don't even get it that when you have the truth, that's real prophecy. So when a person says the Quran has no prophecy, that's because they have no spiritual understanding. Okay, and they've been cherry picking. And most people that talk bad about the Quran haven't even read it. They pick and choose which hadiths they believe. Okay, and that's what you have. You have speculation. You have conjecture. You have assumption. So to sum it all up, we know that the house of Saul is the house of Paul. And that's Christianity. The founder of Christianity is Paul. We know that they have the kingdom today, but it's temporary. One day, the kingdom will go to the house of David, and that is Islam. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth. What's stopping you? What's stopping you from joining Islam today? Oh, it's the discipline. Oh, it's the prayers, huh? Oh, it's you got to wash your ass, huh? You got to wash up. You don't want to wash up, okay? We promote cleanliness in Islam, okay? But let me tell you something. The Quran talks about hell more than any other book. I encourage you to take your salvation seriously. Assalamu alaikum.